today I want to talk about the math that's involved in being a carpenter and it's not that it's that hard it's actually very simple but it's one of those things where once you learn it you have that edge over everyone else that hasn't gone to the carpentry school and as a professional I can tell from a mile away that when someone's done their addition and if a handyman has done it versus a carpenter and it's just those little things where maybe your fascia doesn't line up or you have a weird jog in the roof or the roof jogs up like a couple inches and it's, it looks funny and it's not knowing the math that's involved with being a carpenter and this is going to help uh, people who are looking to apprentice in carpentry uh, and it'll help the handymans too give you guys some education on how it's done and I hope that I can help that with that we're going to run through a few things but over here in my tiny little writing is I'm going to make this a four part series okay so part one today is just giving you the overview um, and how to use two styles to square up a building a couple examples part two is roof pitches and slopes manipulating rise over run because that's a pretty much a major portion of math for carpenters and so is Pythagoras theorem uh, number three is estimating so this will be a good one to stay tuned for I'll go through kind of the steps that I that are involved with me when I do a, an estimation on a quote so I'll use a gable end house I'll be able to figure out the area of the gable end the area of the wall the length of the soffit fascia that I need and even uh, how much shingles I need or how much roofing material okay so that one's a good one and then part four is I want to show you a little more technical math not crazy I'm not going to go through four years of carpentry here and I don't want to bore you guys to death but I just built myself a garage and I match the soffit heights for my new garage to my existing house and I wanted to do that because I knew it was going to be close and if any Joe Blow was doing it and had no forethought and just thought oh, I'll just do a nine foot nine foot wall and all of a sudden it's like an inch and a half taller than the house it would look goofy so just, I want to show you the math involved with doing that and being able to do it properly so you'll look like a pro, okay? So let's get into this real quick. How to square a building, that's part one. Let's just pretend that you have an excavation. We won't get crazy technical. You've just got a flat open ground and you want to put some footings in for a house. You know the size of your house, but you don't know, okay, how the heck am I gonna square this thing, okay? Here's, here's your rough excavation. It's all level and it's good to go. Okay? You know your building size and let's pick some goofy number. 37 by 51. Okay? We'll use that for both examples. Now, we know that this line, this is the line that we want to use. Boom. This is parallel with whatever you want to use. Now, with the method for this method right now is we're going to use the method three, four, five. This is the most common rule for carpenters, and it basically says that to make a right angle triangle, if this size is an increment of three, four, and five, and all those numbers match, that'll make a square triangle. That way, you have a square corner, and then from there you can just build from that. Okay, so. You chalk, let's say you have, you chalk this line in the dirt. You're good to go. You set yourself a point here. This is my intersection point. That's the corner that I want my house at. Then you measure down here an increment of four. So because you're 51 feet long, you can take any one of these numbers, three, four, five. Let's times them by five. 15, 20, 25. So we're going to use feet. You could use 15, 20, 25 inches. It's all the same ratio. So we're going to go 15, 20. So let's pretend this is our 15 side. This is our 20. And then this is our 25. So we're going we're gonna to come down here. We're going to measure from this point exactly 20 feet. Then we're going to guesstimate what's square. We're going to come over here. Well, we won't chalk a line yet but we'll measure from this intersection over exactly 15 feet and we'll make a mark. Then 
we'll pull the tape deadly from this point and we'll come across and we're going to go 25 feet so from here and you're going to make an intersection and right at that intersection when this is 25 feet from here to here and 15 feet from here to here and it's 20 feet from here to there and all your dimensions are perfect where that intersects you should be able to just chalk a, a line all the way straight through and boom now you have a square you have a square corner then it's just simply 37 feet over to here 37 feet over to there 51 feet from here 51 from from here chalk a line chalk a line Bob your uncle you have a square building okay let's use a little Pythagoras theorem and you notice how I had to write it down beforehand because I don't know how to spell it Pythagoras theorem is just basically uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared so a squared b squared c squared okay so a squared is 37 feet so this is a squared b squared and then just basically once again you're just making so that you have a right triangle so you have a square corner and then everything's built from there and then this will be c squared so 37 squared plus 51 squared equals c squared okay so 37 squared equals 1369 51 squared is 2601 you like the chicken scratch there plus 1369 is 3970 now, because these numbers are both squared, that means I have to do a square root to take that back into feet. So it's 63 feet. So 63 feet. So if this is 37, this is 51 feet. 37 feet, 51 feet, and this is 63 feet. When all those line up, you'll have yourself a right triangle and you'll have a square. So between the two, and there's a million different scenarios out there, but you can pretty much square anything, a deck, foundation, a wall, anything based on those two. Uh, I typically use the three, four, five rule, but both come into play and both are easy to use. So that's kind of part one for now. Stay tuned, we'll get to part two, three, and four. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, Please subscribe to our YouTube channel or check us out on some of the following.